Hi, EP Physics. Welcome back to another set of notes on capacitors. In this one, we are going to be looking at capacitors in series and in parallel. And what we want to do is we want to rank uh, these sets of circuits, A through H, and the capacitor marked X for the largest amount of charge on that capacitor to the lowest amount of charge. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at number A or letter A, sorry. Um, if you look in your book, you will notice that the charge on capacitors in series are all equal to one another. So whatever charge there is on the first capacitor will be the charge on the last one. And this means that the total charge is going to be split up amongst a lot of them. So if I have two capacitors in series, that means the total Q is going to be divided by two. Total Q divided by two for this one as well. So that's what x is going to equal. And since b is the exact same one, x is also going to equal q over 2. So for a and b, the total charge is going to be split up in half between the first and second capacitor. So that's why I write q, or to the total q in the circuit, um, as q over 2. Also, know that the voltage for every single battery is the same, and the capacitance for each capacitor is the same. All right. Now for C, when we look at uh, capacitors in parallel, the thing that stays constant is the voltage drop. So since each drops the voltage of the battery, that means that each capacitor is going to have the same charge, and they're going to be equal, but it's not split up like it was in A and B. Instead, it's the total charge of what A and B would have. Uh, if we combine those two capacitors. So that means that this one as well is going to have a charge of Q. So it's going to have twice as much. All right, now if we look at D, well, that's pretty much the same thing as C, right? When we are, when we're looking at this, we can effectively ignore this part of the circuit, right? Because we're looking at the voltage drop across. So notice once I cross that out, um, because I'm ignoring it, it looks just like D. So that means that D is also going to have a charge of Q. All right, now on to E. Things get a little bit more complex. Remember, we have the same voltage drop for those that are in parallel, and then the same charge for those in series. So what we can do is we can actually ignore these two right here because they are going to have some equivalent capacitance for um, equivalent capacitance together. So it's actually going to look just like A and B, even though the equivalent capacitance of this is going to be 2C. Well, that doesn't matter because we only care about the voltage, or sorry, we only care that the charge is going to be split up amongst the two capacitors. So this one is going to have Q over 2 which means that each of these also is going to have Q over 2, right? Since uh, these two are in series together and these two are in series together. All right, moving on to F. Well, here we have one, two, three capacitors in series, which means that the chart is going to be split up amongst the three of them. G is exactly the same as E. It's drawn a little differently, but notice that these two capacitors are in parallel and this one is in series. So if we're looking for this one, right, this is going to be Q over 2 because we just mentioned it in E. Moving over to H, well, again, we have three capacitors in series, which means that it's going to be Q over 3. All right, so those are the capacitors and the charges on each capacitor. Take some time to organize them from largest to smallest. They will not have the same charge on them. They will have different amounts of charge based on how many capacitors there are, whether or not they're in series or in parallel. OK, so for this one, we are going to have now similar circuits for capacitors, but the capacitance on each capacitor is going to be different. So let's look at. A here, we got a battery, and then we're going to have two capacitors in series. 
But this one's going to have two microfarads, and this one's going to have one microfarad. Well, we mentioned last time that the charge on the capacitors in series does not depend on their capacitance. So that only depends on how many capacitors there are. So we have two. So that means that each of these, and this one in particular, is going to have the total charge over two. OK, B is the exact same thing, but we're looking at the other capacitor now. And I'm just going to write one or two above them, because it doesn't matter that it's microfarads or megafarads. It's just depending on the ratio of these capacitors. So here, it's the same thing, because it only depends upon how many capacitors there are in series. All right, for C, now we got to be careful since the capacitance is changing, right? We have one. So if it's just one, then it's going to be, right? The total voltage is going to drop across this, whereas the voltage is going to be uh, dropping across these unevenly. So this one is just going to have a, a charge of Q. Now if we move over to D, we have the same circuit, but the capacitor is twice at, has twice the capacitance. Since it's going to have twice the capacitance, right, the voltage drop is going to be the same over on C as it is on D, but the capacitance is twice, which means that the charge is going to be twice as large. So here we're actually going to have 2Q. All right. Then we move to E, which is two capacitors in parallel. This one's going to have two. This one has one, and we're concerned with the bottom one. Well, just like before in C, it is going to have a charge of Q because it depends upon the capacitance here, right? The voltage drop across both is going to be the same, but here it depends upon the capacitance. For F, it's the same circuit again, but we are concerned with the other capacitor. So this one has the charge of one. This one's got the charge of two, and we're concerned with this one, which means it's going to have two Q across it, right? Because it's got to have the same voltage drop because it's in parallel. All right, for G, we have three capacitors in series. And across, for series, it is the charge is going to be equal no matter the capacitance. So this is one. This is two, this is one. So we're concerned with this one. And it's going to have Q over three. For H, just to make things go a little faster, um, we are concerned with the bottom one. So here, the charge is, again, going to be Q over three. OK, so I hope this helps you figure out what the constants are for different uh, sets of capacitors in a circuit. And I will see you in the next video.